Freeman, the so-called argument from design that you can infer a god from looking at the physical world has been very much out of favor for a long period of time. However, recently it's kind of come back. And this ugly word teleology has surfaced again. How do you view this whole issue? Yeah, well, I think the argument from design makes sense. And, and I'm, I, only one shouldn't regard it as a scientific argument. It's, uh, science has nothing to say about ultimate aims and purpose. But if you go beyond science and talk about the, the universe from a philosophical point of view, from, from a human point of view, then it, the, the argument is quite valid that, after all, we do see evidence of some sort of purpose in the universe. The mere fact that we exist is sort of evidence in some sense that there are things going on which appear to have a purpose, and just in the old-fashioned sense. <laughs> if, if we didn't have a purpose, then we, we might as well say goodbye. There, there's, there, you can't live without a purpose. So it's, it's sort of inherent in the human situation. So how do you harmonize these two points of view, the sort of the scientific point of view, which says everything has to, to, to be determined by the tools of science, which are just experiments and logical arguments, and the, the human point of view, which says we know a lot that goes beyond that. And I find this is not such a big problem for me, I, I, that I, I accept the limitations of science. Science is one set of tools, but doesn't constitute the whole of our knowledge. So there are evidences in the world, which I think are quite real, that it has some sort of a purpose. We don't know what it is, but I, I, I think it's quite likely that the, the, the universe has some sort of a mental apparatus, which you can call God if you like, and, and that, that, that it has a mental aspect as well as a physical aspect. And within the mental uh, apparatus or whatever it may be, there can be a purpose in which, in, in, so in some sense the universe uh, ha, ha, has a mind of its own and has some sort of share in, 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 in formulating the rules. The rules being, of course, this, what we observe in science. So this argument, teleological, in looking at, at, at the universe as if it had purpose, uh, actually can have validity, but not in science? Right. So that's what I mean. A science is, it, it's not that we're forbidden to think outside science, but we shouldn't claim it to be scientific in, in, in information, that's all. And, and the, the, what, is, what science can do is just to test hypotheses and, 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 and discover facts and using the standard tools. But that's not everything. And when you talk about ultimate aims and, and about the, 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 the reasons why the, the laws of nature are the way they are, then you're going outside science and you shouldn't pretend to be a scientist. So then arguments from design, teleological arguments looking at the ends, shouldn't be in science, but they can be outside of science. Uh, and if the physical universe is in science, they sh shouldn't be allowed in that co contest. But if we look at purpose, which is somehow outside the universe, then it then it's legitimate. Yes, I wouldn't say it's outside the universe, but it's outside the the, 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 the scientific mm. picture of mm. the universe. Y you've looked at the concept of mind on several levels. Uh, the, quantum mechanics level, the human level, the whole universe level. How, how do you see mind as part of this design? Well, what we observe, of course, is our own minds, which we know they're there, and we know that, they, that we have either the illusion or the reality of free will, <laughs> so that the, the, the mind is something real, which we have direct evidence of. Then there is, of course, pure speculation that the universe may have a mind of its own or something, or many, a whole, a whole society of minds. <laughs> so that the, there may be mental side to things on a large scale. But what we also know is that in quantum mechanics, every electron seems to have a mind of its own in some sense, that 
we see in quantum mechanics that the future is really not determined by the past, that every uranium atom seems to have a free will in the <laughs> sense it either can decay today or it can decay tomorrow or it can decay in a million years from now. And it's totally unpredictable which is going to happen. So in some sense, every atom has free will. And so uh, that's part of the laws of physics too. We know that that is so, that uh, there is a strict lack of determination in the microscopic world. So I think that may not be a coincidence, that that looks something like free will. I mean, it's not, of course. I'm not saying that electron actually has a consciousness of the kind that we have, but it probably has the rudiments of a consciousness. Mm. In, in some rudimentary sense, every atom has a mind, and, and then what the brain is simply some sort of an apparatus for amplifying the molecules and the, um, um, amplifying the choices that are made by individual molecules and converting them onto a scale of human beings. So that seems to me very plausible that the, the existence of quantum mechanics has something to do with the existence of human consciousness. Of course, that point of view is very unpopular among biologists. Most biologists think quantum mechanics has nothing to do with it. But uh, anyway, I beg to differ. <laughs> So you see the operation of mind at the quantum mechanical level, certainly the first person human level, and then perhaps on this vast universal scale at the universal level. Right. And in some sense, we are parts of, of, of the world soul. I mean, that's, of course, uh, an, an old view which many people have believed. that Our souls are just separate parts of the world soul, and after we're dead, we sort of merge back and so that the, the, our, our experiences and our feelings and emotions are not lost, but they are merged with everybody else, which to me is sort of a, 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 an attractive <laughs> possibility. I don't say I believe it, but it's, it certainly is a possibility that I find attractive. How then do you see the concept of mind, which you have nicely illustrated, with the traditional concept of God? Uh, it's clearly lots of similarities, but how would you articulate the two? Well, I'm so, uh, 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 not assuming that God is omniscient. I think that's the main difference, that, hmm. that uh, the sort of traditional God is sort of outside of space and time. He sees everything, understands everything, and knows everything. And he's also omnipotent very often. But <laughs> my God is different. He, he's part of the universe. He evolves with the universe. He doesn't know what's going to happen. So he, his knowledge increases as time goes on. And I think that does make a big difference. And my point of view, I was told, is Socinian, that Socinus was some sort of a, of a theologian. I don't know much about him, but... Anyway, apparently this was his point of view. Yeah, I would think that would make God's life more interesting. I would think so too, <laughs> yes. So, so he's in doubt just as we are. And, and of course, our contributions are, are in fact, his, his, his growth. I mean, he grows through the contributions of creatures like us. That would tend to make human existence more important. Exactly, yes. It does give us some sort of reason for taking ourselves a bit more seriously. Not to say that the, 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 the humans are the center of the universe. I think that's, I mean, I, I hate the word anthropic because it derives from the Greek for humans. And, and it, 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 I, I would say, I, I think of mind-centered universe, but which is not the same thing as just being human-centered. There may be other kinds of minds out there which are much more evolved than ours. We may be just at the beginnings of an experiment which is not very successful. What's interesting is that whereas your position is not, shall we say, traditional theology, it, it, it really reflects a, a, a deep uh, resonance with the importance of, of, uh, of, of ultimate reality and what it really means. Yes, I think that's right. I mean, I, I don't, I don't like the word ultimate reality because it's sort of pretentious. But nevertheless, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I think if there is a world soul, then that's what it's all about. And, and 
that and that 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 is what gives the world its meaning and and so the, the fact that we are part of that gives our minds and our lives meaning too and that's your hope but certainly not your absolute uh, uh conviction absolutely no i'm thoroughly happy to be in 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 a world of mystery i mean the science and religion are both in fact mysterious and that's why I think that they don't conflict with each other. That, that we have mysteries which are religious, and we have also mysteries which are scientific. And and I'm happy to have both. <laughs>